The presenting sponsor of this episode of Banana Island Living Podcast is Banana Island School. Banana Island School is a school with happy kids and very high expectations. So why don't you check them out? Uh, go to mail at bananaislandschool.com. Go to the website www.bananaislandschool.com. Or just check them out on Instagram at Banana Island SCH. That's Banana Island SCH. Hello and welcome to another episode of Banana Island Living Podcast. My name is Shadi. And before we start, you know I always ask, please subscribe, tell a friend and give us a five star rating. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about my guest, but first she's going to say hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Aha. Uh-huh. Now Get people to subscribe. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> a woman after my heart. Yes. Yes. Now I've got... Tokumbo George Taylor, if you're in the corporate space in Nigeria, even abroad, you will have heard of her. She's she's just an amazing PR person. She's the pioneering manager director of H&K Strategies Nigeria, which is one of the world's leading global communication companies. They, they opened in Lagos in 2015, yeah? Correct. And you were the first person. Correct. Yes, they I was. Yes. Did they, they head, head on to you or did you go look? So it was through a friend of mine in South Africa that right. actually informed me that they were looking to set up an office here. Um, Moki. Moki is her name. And okay. so she connected me with um, the lady and she came into Nigeria. They'd been interviewing quite a few people. Until they met you. And I guess I scaled through. <laughs> yeah. So after the meeting, I yeah. now had to go to London to meet the head of the um, group. Yeah. And I guess the rest is history. <laughs> uh, and it's, yeah, it's from, from then on, it's been, it's been amazing. But your journey wasn't always destined to be. No, yeah. I studied economics. That's what I read. Yes. And I was thinking, hmm. <laughs> and just before the recording started, we were talking about Wisconsin. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it, it's just so surreal how Nigerians find themselves in interesting places to study. You studied at Wisconsin. Yes, not only in Wisconsin. So there's Whitewater, Madison, and Milwaukee, which are really the big ones. Yes, the big ones. I was in Stevens Point, (laughs) you know, a small, tiny town. Is it KKK? Uh, Well, it could be. It could be, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. And, um, but I was coming from a very small school in the UK. Right, yes. So the size of um, of Stevens Point worked for me. Um, I made friends quickly. They had a lot of international students there as well. So that really assisted me in settling down. And I mean, I just loved the environment. The school was in a very small town. You Mm. could drive here, drive there. So it was a small, close, neat, you know, and obviously my parents' fears that if I went to a bigger university, I might (laughs) become someone different. America. America. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, I mean, did you make... Uh, American friends? Yes, I did. I actually went back for weddings. You oh, know, I wow. was, you, know, you know, American weddings are like, yeah. day, you know, rehearsals, bridesmaids. Oh, lovely. So yes, I did. And I still keep in touch with quite a few of them. It's interesting because I know quite a few people who went to university in the UK and they, their friends mainly came from boarding school or whatever. The university is not so much native people. people yeah. But in the US... They seem to keep their sort of white Americans, African American friends a, they do. a bit longer. Yeah, they do. And I think it's it's fun because some of the ones that I did not reach out to, yeah. they reached out to me oh, on LinkedIn how, as how well. Lovely. Oh wow. And then before that you were at Owando? Yes. So I worked in Owando for yeah. fourteen years. Good Lord. Yeah, so you they, were there when they were having all the change of name. I actually did the rebranding. No. I did the rebranding That's amazing. from Ajib and Unipetrol to Owando. Um, so it's a baby of mine. So you commissioned the logo. Yes. Yeah, so and what, the name. Correct. 
Correct. We yes. had, you know, we had. I the, thought that was inspired. Uh, yes, we were really happy about which, that. Which um, uh, company did you use to come up so with the name? So we used and... um, a company in South Africa, mm. a branding company. So they went through all the exercise. Okay. You know, Unipetrol was really like the old yeah. government yeah. organization. Yeah. And I was actually headhunted in the UK to right. come back to actually I was headhunted to come back and work for the holding company. OK. Um, Wando. Yeah. Um, Ocean and Oil Holdings. Ocean and Oil, where used to be. And then I was told to come in just to do some strategy work for Unipetrol then. Yeah. And I never went back to my old Ocean and Oil <laughs> Holdings. I was told yeah. to remain there. So what we did was we worked with the South Africa and we went through, you know, because when you're doing a rebranding exercise, you need to speak to the employees to see what they're looking for, what the look and feel should be. What do they think when they think of this new company? So we went through that whole exercise. What should our logo? So our logo, if you look at it, is like the sun mm. expanding in different ways. Right. Yeah. So it shows that the company can adjust to different things at different times because we started as a downstream mm. we went to midstream we went to upstream, upstream yeah um we went to buying oil s- supply and trading mm. um so there were quite a few things and then the non-fuel revenue having the stores that you have in the retail outlets so yes um it was was very challenging well i was going to say because you'd have to sort of get into the head of the company correct so you're not just dealing with head office you're dealing with transporters distributors, dealers in the stations that have been used to the name Unipetrol. You probably end up knowing the company more than the new people coming in. Correct, because you, obviously we had to study a yeah. lot about, you know, the culture. We had to yeah. completely change the culture. Yeah, you um, know which, co- this is the culture, this is where we want to be, and this is how we're going to get there. Exactly, Wow. exactly. So I actually went all across Nigeria to see the dealers the transporters, Gosh. just to talk to them, even find, just showing them the name and how to pronounce it. To recognize it and how to pronounce it? Yes. Gosh. So just get the feel, let yeah. them understand why we're doing it. Um, yeah, it was it was very, very interesting. Obviously, at the beginning, a lot of people like the Unipetrol name. Yeah. But we had well, to it, was, it had name recognition. Well, petrol would mean that we're going to be known as a petrol company True. all throughout. And we're doing a lot more than just petrol. Gosh. No, I'm I, I'm just in awe. And then, you know, last week we were talking about um, branding and rebranding. And, uh, you know, you're saying a lot of people in Nigeria don't even know they need to be branded. They don't know they need personal branding. Right. And I, I'm really old school. I, mean, <laughs> I, just, I, I just feel a little bit uncomfortable about putting myself out there. Why, why do you think people need branding? Okay, so when you go out and buy something yeah you're drawn to it by something either the packaging Mm. the brand somebody has told you about it and you look forward to getting that item you wouldn't buy something that you don't feel is going to work for you or pleasing to your eyes yeah and it's just like a human being an individual person needs to brand themselves what is your purpose what is your statement? How are you going to sell yourself? What are your unique selling points? Well, isn't that a little bit pushy? I mean, I just feel it's not. It's so American. <laughs> it is American, but if you want, for example, if you're looking at your career, yeah, and you want your career, you know, to hit the roof, how are you going to sell yourself? Mm-hmm. When people see you or when people hear your name, what will they think of? Yeah, it's positioning. It's positioning. It's okay, positioning I think, yourself. I think what I what I sort of hesitate about. It's the selling yourself thing. It's the branding thing. It just seems to have, especially for women, we're always a little bit reticent. Why do I want to sell myself? It has certain connotations. So I think there are a couple of things. Yeah. When you look, there's brand and there's brand identity. Yeah. Right. Brand and branding, who you are. Mm. And I think... If you know, if you don't sell yourself, yeah. nobody else is going to sell yourself. Yeah. And when you look at brand identity, is what you look like. Mm. And you know, we do judge the book by its cover. Alas, you don't. Yes, sadly, you don't, you don't get a yeah. second chance when you walk into that room. When you walk into that meeting, who wrote that book? Something about the blink. Something I'm like, not even sure. You know that there's a guy, there's a whole business book about uh, the power of blink or something like that. You've got three seconds or something. Exactly. To make an impression. And that is the impression. 
they're yeah. going to have of you. Yeah. And sometimes we might get complacent. Yeah. So it's not just about selling yourself. It's how you look, how you communicate, yeah. how you connect with people, how you engage with people. It's the whole package. So you don't have to be out there saying I'm this, I'm that. But when people see you, you don't want people thinking, oh, who is she? Okay, what yeah. is she doing? But I, I'd rather like that. I mean, I, t- I, I just think the world has moved so quickly now. Um, I remember somebody saying, if you want to employ somebody, if you want to do business with somebody, you immediately Google them. And if they don't have a presence, that raises a red flag. Please note, yes. anytime my children come home now from school, I Google the, their friend's parents' name <laughs> to ensure, <laughs> just to ensure. Yes. It, it's important. And I think, let me bring it back to Nigeria. So when you go to an organization, right? Yeah. You feel more comfortable when you know the person mm. that runs the organization. So it's very important in this part of the world that, you know, executives and women especially should really brand themselves so right. that people know who they are and what they stand for and they can sell their, their uniqueness. But if you're not a business businesswoman, you're not in the corporate world. So you could be anybody, but yeah. your presentation. Yeah, I think is presentation is very, yeah. very important. Remember when we were young and they said abdomen in, chest out, shoulders yes. back. <laughs> yes, yes. Presentation is very important, and you'll even find out now with kids, they look at how their parents present yeah. themselves when their parents are going out with them. Yeah. Because again, I go back to it. I see you. I'm like, oh, okay, and I'm like. Is that the right person? So it's not just about in the professional. But world. is it, are we being superficial? I don't think it's superficial. Yeah. I still go out at the right engagement in yeah. my leggings. Yeah. You know, I went for my kids' sports yeah. day. It's a whole package. Yeah. So it's the physical appearance is one. Yeah. The way you communicate. Yeah. The respect you give people. Yeah. The way you talk to people. The eye contact yeah. that you maintain. It's all your personal brand. You know, so it's very important. It's not just get dressed up to go anywhere. It's how you present themselves. And don't forget, branding of yourself is what people say about you when you're not there. So what would they think about you when you're not there? What would they say about you? What thoughts would they have about you? So if you think about that, then you'll know how you're going to present yourself. Do you know something that's always sort of... Not so much bothered me, but I've thought about it in terms of cultural contexts. We're bringing up children now who ricochet between Europe, America, Nigeria, and these kids have to be like cultural chameleons. How does that carry through? And I see children going to the best schools abroad. They can't go to the ministry and get things done. Hmm. They can't go to the market and and banter. Not it's not even the language. Again, or you go to the you go and visit your grandmother. You have to kneel down, you have your eyes have to go down, kind of thing. Abroad, you have to make eye contact. In Nigeria, you don't make eye contact to show respect. So these how do these kids, how do the young people coming out? I think how do they brand themselves? I people like us I'm, might have yeah. retired <laughs> out of we're not competing anymore. I think part of our culture. Yeah. It's been eroded. Yeah. And it's quite sad. And I think parents yeah. have a lot to do with it. Mm. Some parents want their children to have the Oibo culture. That's up to them. Yeah. Some people want them to have the Nigerian culture. That's up to them. Some people want a balanced culture. Yeah. And I think it's up to us. Mm. They're children, and it's what you teach them at the very beginning. We have a culture. We have a brand. Nigeria has a culture. Nigeria has a brand. So you don't want to dilute your country's brand. You don't see any other country do that. They stick with their brand. They stick with their culture. Mm. So I think it's important for us to teach our kids that they need to stick to the culture. And if we teach them at the very early age, no matter where my children see anybody, they kneel down. I don't care where you're, whether you're on Oxford Street you hit, you hit or you're you just or, hit the, oh, yeah. Banana Island Park. Yeah. You need to kneel down and greet properly. You know, our language has been eroded. That's yeah. our brand. Yeah. You know, so in a couple of years, all our kids will be speaking English. God forbid, as they will say in Nigeria. Yeah. 
But it's our culture. It's our brand. And if we don't have a brand identity, your brand can be diluted. That's why you find that companies refresh their brand. They refresh their logo. So we need to refresh our kids to let them know that this is our brand. It's a tough one. Yeah. And that's why sometimes when you even put kids abroad, you need to bring them home frequently to see what's going on. You know, they see the negativity. They don't see the positivity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we need to bring them home. We need to talk to them. We need to have kids mix with other kids that grow up here. It's not about them and us. It's us all together. Yeah. And I, I just, I mean, I, I've been, since we had that conversation about branding, I've been thinking about it a lot. And especially for women. And, and men also, they take it for granted that they don't need branding, but maybe they, when they're in the corporate space, they take on the brand of their company. But how, first of all, well, let's talk about the men. How would you advise a thrusting, up and coming wannabe? I didn't go abroad, though, but I've been made a big banker here. Okay, first of all, how do I belong? How do I belong? Do I join Ikoi Club? <laughs> I start playing golf overnight or. I think you Let's need, talk the nitty gritty. First of all, self assess. Right. What am I? Is key- it possible to be self assessed when you don't know? You know the truth about yourself. You really? Know, you know what you're good at. And you not easy to not be self aware. But you need to be because when somebody's telling you, you yeah. reinforce. So there are two ways. You can either self assess or go to um, a branding coach. Okay. To Do you get- know any? There are quite a few. There are one right. or two people, and we do. Um, oh, brand good. Okay. And media. So you're going to give us all your and presentation contact skills. points. Yes. Okay. Yes. So once you assess yourself, and what I find in this part of the world as well is presentation skills. Mm. You you know you have very senior people who don't know how to present. So you self assess. What is your purpose? What is your personal statement? If I was to ask you about you, what would you say about you? Once we have all that, we'll not be able to look at the areas. Mm. Is it your dressing? Is it your speech? Is it your presentation skills? Is it the way you communicate to people? Some people have um, speak very harshly, but mm. they don't mean it. How do you control that? So that tone. You, that your tone. How do you control that so that people will not know that you're being aggressive? You know. So we'll have to almost do an audit. You yeah. know, do a self assessment. We do an audit, and then we'll look at how we can bring you up to that, to create a brand, you know, that people would recognize and people can affiliate themselves with. So I'm a thrusting guy. I've just been made a big banker. I didn't go, I I hate it when they say people have a chip on their shoulder, but you don't quite feel comfortable. Uh, And I know I've got my eye on the prize. I want to get there. How do I smoothing out the edges? So I come to your company, you do an audit Yes. And then what do you do with me? We do an audit and yeah. we'll look at the areas we need. You to do that in your it. office there? Yes. I mean, okay. I recently did it for, you know, um, some CEOs. Is it a 360 degree? Do you get other people to give feedback? So we get journalists okay. that are there that will interview them. Okay. We record them so oh, they wow. can see themselves. And hear themselves as and well. Hear themselves. Gosh, yeah. And I think that's, that's scary. <laughs> I mean, there was a gentleman that saw himself and said, is that really me? Oh. And when he saw himself, he asked for some more coaching. He's oh, like, I'm not there that yet. That is so good. I'm not there yet. I yeah. need a lot more of this to be able to get. So what would that coaching involve? So, well, first of all, well, a couple of things. Media coaching is very important. Okay. Your messaging. Sometimes people don't know how to get their message across. They just talk. And when you go for a meeting, you need to know that you're in this meeting to get a certain message across when you're talking to your employees. So a lot of people have it in their head, but they don't know how to deliver the Mm. message. So messaging is very important. So you provide media coaching as well? Correct. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Then control. How do you control? How do you answer questions, Q&As? no matter where you are. And you're going to be in a conference one day where they're going to shove the microphone and say, ask you about something. So you role play? We role play. Okay. We definitely have to role play because it's very important. Then we tell them to present. We'll give them a topic. Present. Let us see your... Ah, I get my PA to write it now. (laughs) But your body, body language. Yes, okay, yes. You find people twitching, walking, hands all over the place. People get distracted. Mm. They need to hear your message, not see your message. Right. Or both. Or both, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, and then after and then the... To, uh, then after, we basically monitor them, go to events that they're going to be. 
see <laughs> the serious the interviews that they do and yeah. then we have a refresher course oh gosh depending on how they've improved yeah or how they've not improved and sometimes we do it as a group so they have their peers okay there and yes i mean but that's it, a bit um you feel a bit naked don't no, you no actually it's funny because the first time I mean, not the first time when we do it and they they all come in i'm like this is going to be like five, six hours. They're like, no, we have nothing to learn. Yeah. Do it. It's not but when they see their first video cut, gosh. They'll be like, in fact, when you read the review sheets after, yes. they like, do a like a reflection. Yes. So oh, you should, wow. and they'll be like, please, we should have more video, please. Oh. And a lot of them actually I, I laugh and I was like, oh you know what, I'm gonna forward these videos to your kids and see what they yeah. think. When they see those videos, they realize they have a lot of work to do. Gosh. They do realize that they have a, and they laugh at each other because some go shell shocked. They'll be like, um, 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 um. And I'm like, you guys, you know this topic. Yes. This is your business. Yes. You know, this is your business. You don't need to be like that. You don't need to be afraid. But again, I think our culture, bringing up kids, a lot of people are not open or, well, they don't experience uh, public speaking. Yeah. And what I do for Oh, they're talking public- at people. Correct. Even the language. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Even the language that they use. And the boss, they, and that boss under, tone. And they don't understand that the language mm. also matters. Yeah. It's emotional intelligence. Yes. And I, I don't know, also, yeah, it's intelligence, I guess. But also, sometimes you know, but you don't want to accept until somebody comes to tell you that you, how you come across. And by the time you're some big ogre, how many people are going to come and tell you? But people also know. Yeah. Yes. After ogre. Yeah. There has to be something else for them. True. Board positions, yeah. visibility, yeah. branding. Why should I employ this person? Why should this person be the chairman? Okay, you're board? my new best friend. I need brand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's it's you're not going to quit there. Yeah. So what are they going to say when they, I mean I know that I go to conferences we have a list of names of speakers and we're actually criticizing each person. Okay, this person is oh no 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 oh no, yeah. no, no. this person has had a scandal. This person has had a Good thing. lord. You need to be a trusted person. Yeah. And then do you recommend them joining some certain clubs to be seen and or oh, attend certain it, it, events? So a part of branding is networking. <sighs> okay, this so is hard work. Brand, so part of branding is networking. Yes. It's if a full-time you don't network, job, this branding if thing. If you don't network, networking is actually very good. That's why you see yeah. men, when men meet, they mm. have a beer, they have yeah. whiskey. But there, there's, there's a purpose. There's a deal yes. that has come out. So it's very important for networking. You do need to belong to the right clubs. Yeah. The right clubs. So you then suggest clubs as well? We do. Because <gasps> if they're not members, I mean, it's always good to, ch- well, you're gonna meet to this, join the yeah. Institute of Directors. Okay. Because you meet other people. They put you on other committees. Okay. And you now begin to meet people out of your usual network. Right. Okay. If you're in oil and gas, you can meet somebody in banking, okay. in um, entertainment. You now begin to meet different people. As I'm writing notes. <laughs> Um, Watch me going quickly to go and join Instagram. So it helps you expand. So let's say that an oil and gas company is looking for um, a banker to come and address them on, you know, macroeconomics. They'll think of that person. You're meeting more people. It expands your brand. It expands your visibility. It expands your company and expands you. Okay. So what about this golf thing? Uh, Because I I mean, I took up golf and I was almost embarrassed to admit it because I just want to do it for exercise. But I hear, ah, you have to go and do golf because networking. Well, I think it is an elite sport, right? And a lot of people do it now for networking. Yeah. And a lot of people close deals. Do they? Yes, they do. And then you see... Branding is about remembering that person yeah. that you play with. Um, if you think about it, you don't you don't get to spend as much time with your friends. Yeah. But if I remember that, oh, I played golf with Mrs. Marriott, she has a podcast, I will think of you immediately. But if I don't see you, I won't remember you. So it keeps um people's names. So if you want to be a private person, I don't, I just don't, I want to go under the radar, that doesn't reflect. So that's why it's good for you to do a self-assessment right? and look at the purpose. Do you want to do full rebranding of me or do you just want to go in softly? So you have to really, really look at your purpose. What do I want to achieve? What do I need to achieve? And you can decide what level. 
Okay, I'm going to go through this rebranding another way. I see a lot of um, this Hollywood people that have like a scandal thing. They'll go on Oprah and then they go and do some charity work and look at me. Invariably, they go to Africa and put some poor brown baby next to them uh, <laughs> and be the savior, the white savior. Charity work, rebranding, how does that work without being cynical? So people never forget the bad that you've done. Yeah. You can't whitewash. Yeah. It's not with the, no, what, with the internet now. Yeah, you can't. You know, people will call you out. You know, they will always call you out. Um, yes, people do to save their image, mm. to save their face. To start a charity. To save for repu their reputation. Or they get into a charity. Is, you know, they'll go into charity. But we all know that, you know, it doesn't work. Oh, what and if you people, haven't had a scandal, but as a way of branding yourself? So again, it, it depends on what is your purpose. Purpose, yes. What is your purpose? You can have a brand that you know that that brand is a non-for-profit brand and I want to help people. Mm. That's fine. That's yeah. the brand. Yeah. You know, so you can now decide that I'm going to focus on charity work. This is what, you know, and eventually when people meet you, they're like, oh, she does all that charity work. Yeah. I know I've read about these people who marry people through, met through charity, you know, the way to be big men yeah. is to go to some charity, you'll meet them that way. Somehow, apparently it does work. So if your goal, like you said, the purpose is to marry rich, so you go. Don't forget, <laughs> you, you need to brand yourself. Yeah. People brand themselves to get what they want. Yeah. It depends whether on what you want. Whether it's professionally. Whether it's whether marriage. Get married. Get, get yeah. get married they brand themselves. Yeah. And so sometimes branding can be deceiving because the person you met might not be exactly. the person you yeah, end that's up why, with. That's what I sort of think, isn't it a little bit? Mm, it, it's so calculated, the idea of being or branding yourself. So there's something a little bit calculating about it. I think it's been strategic about it. Yeah. It's strategic. Okay. You know, I do work so, with as a, as a kind of word. Yeah, strategic. Because <laughs> I do have some CEOs that I work with that yeah. like, you know, I just want... A little publicity. Yeah. Just to keep top of mind awareness. Yes. yes. I don't want to be all exactly. the Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to be out there. I don't want to be a socialite. I want people to know that this is my this is my field. This is what I do. I'm a thought leader in my field. When I talk, I'm talking about things that will make an impact yeah. and will change things. So you have to be you have to balance the strategy. And the subtleness, depending on the messaging you yeah. want to get across. Okay. My last question on the okay. business end, because I really want to get to know you, mm -hmm. is um, disaster recovery. Like, uh, how do you, reputation management. Okay. Because uh, that's, <laughs> that, that's becoming an issue now, it's, especially it's, with social media. Yeah, I mean. Through I, no fault of some people. Sure, sure. How do you, how do you advise people um, do that? There are two ways, you mm. know. I mean, all last weekend, I was actually fighting a crisis for a Gosh. You know, two ways. I believe only the paranoid survive, right? Okay. That's my motto. You're going to break life. that down for me, but go ahead. Yes. So be paranoid that things will always go wrong. So Gosh. if you're paranoid about things, will, that things will always go wrong, how do I make it right? Yeah. So there are two ways. I had a company that came to me last year. Mm. They were going to, they, they thought they were going to have a crisis, a potential crisis, yeah. right? So they were looking ahead. So we planned. Before the crisis. Yes, happened. that's so clever. And that's what a lot of companies do. don't. They don't do no, it. A lot of them don't do. Oh, the international company. company. Okay, they do that. Yeah. Outside, you know, they, they, yeah. they have a business here. Because you need to plan who are the target audience that are going to be affected. What are the key messages for the target audience? When you have a crisis, your message to the regulator and the government is different. Mm. Your message to the consumers are yeah, different. different. Your message to the employees are different. True. Your message to the media, completely different. So you don't you, think it has to be consistent through? There will be certain things, but what they want to hear. Yeah, okay. Right? Or what is important to them. What is important to them is yeah. how, what are you going to put in place? Government, yeah. what are you going to put in place that this will not happen again? Consumers, I mean, I don't, I don't want to use the example I want mm. to use because it's a bit... Um, sensitive especially on social media if some social somebody just media, put it can even be a lie which is what i had yeah with the company and we we had to work very hard to ensure I'll, I'll give you an example yeah i was sitting in my office the other day yeah 
I just, you know, I wasn't looking at my WhatsApp. I started looking at my WhatsApp, started looking at my WhatsApp, friends from America, the UK. They had put my picture as a wife of a governor uh-huh. that had just come back into the limelight and was my engagement picture uh-huh. with but a different Good name. name. Good heavens. But luckily with the PR machine that I yes. had, a lot of people were saying, you, <laughs> you need to this is a different knock this person. on the head. I need, to take, yeah. I need to take this down now. now. Um, so you have to be prepared, especially yeah. when you are in the service business. Yes, yes. Um, so what we tell clients to do is have all the questions ready, answer them, because at the heat of the crisis, you can't. You can't even think. Yes. So prepare for it. Go through all those scenarios. Yes. What I tell clients is let's do a couple of scenarios that, you know, high probability that it will happen. Once we identify, we get we actually write statements ready. And don't forget your statement yeah. on a social on social media is going to be different to the Well, you go on for the characters. In on, <laughs> on, on in print media. Yes. And for Twitter, yeah, you know, because they're different audiences. Yeah, and sometimes you might not be able to cater to all the audiences, but which audience is the most matters yeah, to most, you most. the most? And there are a lot of fake news, of course, a lot of fake news. Yeah. So you also need to challenge the status quo and write to those companies putting those things up to let them know, gosh, that this is not true. But I mean, I'm sure clients are calling you in the middle of the night. Well, <laughs> you know, and then sometimes things happen and it's not your client's fault. I'm so impressed by you. I, I just, I, I'm in awe. I just can't believe the amount of the strategic thinking that's involved in your business. I think people underestimate it. Yes. The, the, the conscious, like you said, branding, but then like something like this now, somebody calls you, I say, I have a situation. And all hands on deck, you start calling in people. So you have to know people in the media. You have to know people in the media. You have to ensure that the news does not leak out. Right. Or you get your statement out yeah, because right. you, na- you need to champion the narrative. Yes. Once the, champ- once the, the narrative media, runs away from you, you're that's stuck. It. That's it. As I that's say, uh, what is it? The, the, run, the, the lie has run across the world before the truth gets its trousers on or something. And they have to quickly train the spokespeople and ensure that employees don't talk to anybody. Do you do that as well? Yes. Oh, well, sometimes, you know, you have spokespeople that just like to talk. Yes. And yes. they over talk. In Nigeria, Nigeria people over talk. It's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. unnecessary. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> I'm going to talk about you. You're right. Okay. Do you think you have a personal brand? I believe so. Okay. Talk to me. So so. this is where you're going to describe yourself in three words for me. Um, Usually I add that at the 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 end, end. but I want to ask it now. How would you describe your personal brand? Energetic. Energetic. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I think I put energetic, self-driven and compassionate. Okay. And my energy is in everything I do. Right. In my work, in my discipline, with my family, in my fashion. You know, I am that person that I want to walk into a party and I'm like, okay. Energy generator. <laughs> Energy is here even with yeah. my clothing. Yeah. And what I do. People laugh at me with my glasses because I have But that's, just, that's your that's your brand. That's my brand. Right. So you're compassionate? Compassionate. I I feel for people. Okay. I, I mean, I'll give you an example. I, I sent a friend to buy me something in London mm. and um, she said she had to do it because she knew that if it was me, mm. I would never come back to Nigeria without, without without it. Yeah, and I'm compassionate with people that work for me. Yeah, even my I think my that's nannies, so important. Yeah, driver, just put yourself in their shoes. You know, my my staff, especially. Mm. You know, they're like my children. Yeah, you know, and I have a personal relationship with all of them. Mm. You know, they tell me things before they even tell their parents, mm. and you know, sometimes I feel their pain. So I think I'm a compassionate person. Maybe too soft sometimes that people um, abuse it, but it's life. I do yeah. what I need to do. I don't worry about it. As I say, that. you do you. I do me. Yeah. I'm self-driven because I'm a workaholic, right? I love work. Mm. Um, but I believe I've been given this opportunity. Right. Not everybody's given an opportunity. Yeah. So I want to succeed. Well, you've also seized every opportunity. I mean, you didn't start out in PR. No, I didn't. I started you know, in economics. Yeah. yeah. And, and you just you just flew with it. Yes, I did. And I, I really thank God because I can't think of any other 
career that would suit my personality. Mm, that would have used all your skills. Exactly, exactly. Because so you did business analytics for something? I did something? economics. Yes, but after that, you did a diploma. Yes, I did. Oh, you read my CV. I've been checking you out. I've done the Google search. <laughs> you read my CV. Yes. And I actually got into PR by mistake because MultiChoice came to Nigeria. Mm. MultiChoice and Mnet were one company. Yeah. And they were looking for... A PR person. Right, which and you hadn't done before. Had, <laughs> yes. No, I, I didn't even know what it was. So you quickly Googled it? <laughs> I, didn't even, there was, I didn't even Google it at that time. So, but through someone, through somebody like yeah. in Nigeria, um, I went to do my youth yeah. core. Um, no, no, it was after my youth core. I yeah. went there for my first job. And I was trained by PR companies in South Africa. I was mm-hmm. always in South Africa being trained. And I really, you know... You know, it really, really put me in the career that I really wanted to. And from then on, went yeah. to the UK, worked in a PR agency, although it took me time yeah. to get work in England. Why was that, do you think? Because PR is really for the white, blonde hair girl. And, you know, it took me two years. I was Gosh. Going, yes. And I didn't give up. I used to... How did you look, get that break? So I used to, um, I think it was the... Was it the Telegraph or okay? That oh, that's very job, that, that had jobs that, every week. They call it the Torograph. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I used to look at the jobs, and I just used to apply. Yeah, I finally Gosh. applied to Nelson Bostock. Okay, the the guy that um, interviewed me mm. was from New York, and you know, they I have had a different perspective. One tiny oh. bit. I know how they tell you as black. Yes, you yes, not yes, you yes. Me because you look jamu. Yes, but I did, and the first thing he said is, "How long did it take you to do your hair?" <laughs> And, you know, so I went, so they said to me that, look, we're going to start you at the very beginning. Yeah. We're going to start you. At least we're starting. So you know, starting said, me. But, you know, I was promoted twice in a year. Wow. And that was how I got my break um, until I came back to Lagos. Okay. And um, Sunday morning church or chill? Church, definitely. Okay, which church do you go to? Um, Holy Trinity, Lagos. HTB. You know, HTL. HTL, okay, yes. Why Why HTL? It's an easy church. It's yeah. a young church. Um, it's informal. I like the way they preach. Yeah. I like the people there. I even come now to the Bible study on Tuesdays and okay. Thursdays in the cafe in yeah. Banana. Yeah, Um it, It's, they're um, not forcing. Um, Koyobasi is affiliated to that church? Which who? Uh, Pastor Tony. Yeah, Pastor Tony. Okay, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, it's just an easy church. Yeah. You know, you don't feel judged. Pressure. You don't feel. You don't feel, you judged. Don't feel judged. Yeah. You don't have to dress up to church if you yeah. don't want to. But I mean, Sundays is my dress up days. So. Yeah. So that works. <laughs> yes. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. And who do you admire most? Hmm. I admire quite a few people. Okay. I'll start with the. Uh, Former secretary to the state, Condoleezza Rice. Oh, why can't be? I know she's oh, a she's, great pianist. She's tough. She's driven. Yeah. She's passionate. She's focused. Incredibly bright. Extremely bright. You know, she stands her own. Um, and obviously, you have to have those values, you know, to reach that um, stage in your career. And very calm as well, you know, but in a forceful way. Yeah. You know, so I just like her personality. It's really... It's... Interesting you would mention her. She's not somebody that comes up often when you ask, who do you admire most? I think I started I hear she trained her. as a concert pianist or something. Are you serious? Yeah. Um, I, I used to follow her and I remember my chairman then, you know, one day when yeah. he sees me, like, Condoleezza Rice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Condi. Condi, yeah. Oh, that's really And I, and I think, obviously, Nelson Mandela for yeah. the obvious reasons. Yeah. And if you bring it back home, Fumilayo, Ransom And some Kuti. So you see that I like tough, strong women, women. that stand on their yes. own and, you know, defies what people think can never be done. And if yeah. you look at Fumilayo at that time. She was, she was she amazing. Did. And she succeeded. She was the one who uh, organized the campaign against the then Oba, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. There's a Mola. beautiful movie coming out by my best uh, Oh, Mola fantastic. Some yes. Some Kuti. Oh, brilliant. Yes, it was, she it was, was an amazing, amazing woman. It was an ama- she, she but was I think amazing. that generation of women were just so incredible. They're, they're understated. They were fire. They were, fire. They were educate academic but also they were 
they didn't hide their light. They didn't modify their personalities. No, they didn't. What she you saw was what you because, get. You know, and, and one other thing, her husband let her. Yes. That's what I mean. They didn't modify their personalities. A lot of those women, I mean, from the image you had of African women was submissive. I don't know where they got that from. Certainly not Yoruba women. Definitely they were not. You know, my grandmother, all of them were out there doing stuff. Yep. Yep. And it's really, I, I'm, yeah, I, I, I agree with that one. Okay. Now, if you weren't doing the work you're doing now, which is probably your dream job, what would your dream job be apart from this? Hmm. One last shot. One last shot. Yes. Is to be the group CEO of an integrated communications company. From your mouth. <laughs> to God's ears. To God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me, is that medium or end game or whatever? Or start your own or what? Um, it'll be my own eventually. Yeah. If I partner to start with, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But I think one thing about me as well is I want to have younger people to take an yes. opportunity to run yeah. it. So let me not say group CEO, maybe the chairman. Yeah. And, you know, because there's the new media, right? Mm. Um, and so they've got their finger on exactly. the side, guys. So I think it's my me to long-term plan. Well, I have to do it before I'm 60. You better get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, if whilst you could I live, have the whilst you have the, you're very energetic. He's probably going to be <laughs> yes. with you for a while. Okay. Now, if you could live anywhere else that's not Nigeria, where would you be? South of France. Okay. Or Greece, maybe more south Because of the of weather? <laughs> yes. Um, south of France, you get to get the, 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 I like to dress up in my winter clothes as well. Oh, okay. I like to is, wear it, my is it for the clothes or the warm? <laughs> <laughs> so we need to break them down. <laughs> Um, I think south of France would be a bit chilled. I yeah. love wine. Yeah. I love drinking. Yes, okay. Yeah, That's so a good place to be. So just to chill. Yes. Okay. And um, are you a morning person? or A uh, morning person. I yeah. go for walks, swimming. That's my time. That's Tukumba time with God. What is wrong That's with all you people waking time. up so early? What time do you get up? About 5.15. I knew when I saw that you had cheekbones and I could see your profile and you had put away, I said, this, this lady is going to be telling me that she woke up at 5 a.m. I, I do, because that's Gosh. my new time, because by the time I'm, I come in, I'm getting the kids ready, you know, yeah. finding what, what hubby is going to eat, you know. So, so you do that like for an hour? So I you know, so I, I've, I've increased it to like an hour, 45 minutes. Gosh, so okay. For about 45 minutes, swim for about 30 minutes. You walk at 5.15 in so Banana? I used to do it inside Banana, Yeah. But now because I want to swim, yeah, I you go to that pool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I get to my 6,000 steps. Yes. On my step up. Yeah. Then I jump into the pool. And then. You do that for 30 minutes? To about 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And then, you know, then I play my music. Gosh. And um, that's my me time. And then the day starts. And I can just think focus not rushing yeah it's just and you think you get to think at that time oh that's when i talk to god yeah i, I don't am i not you're doing so plea bagging it like, yes <laughs> yeah. i just talked to him we've been told to talk to him yes, as a friend yes. <laughs> see I, all that what i did yesterday i'm starting on a new yes. on a new slate today okay now what are you reading two books mm -hmm. um so there's um the praying parent okay I'm i never heard that parts, one um yeah it's um just taking parts because, you know, they, well, I guess I'm getting more spiritual as I get older. Mm -hmm. um, so praying for your children, you know, <laughs> kind of praying for the, where they're going to be and where yeah. they're going. Um, then the other one is the fourth revolution that I just got and I just started. It's okay. written by um, the founder of the World Economic Summit. Okay. Yeah. Um, Close shop. Yeah. And um, he's basically talking about technology mm -hmm. and digitalization, yeah. how it's going to take over all industries, not just some. He set up a, an education company as well. It was the same guy. I'm prob probably. Yeah. I think he's uh, so called Wiz Education or something like that. Wake I think. Up and there's going to be an app that's going to write press releases. So what's going to happen to us? Have you used ChatGPT? Yes, we have. How did it go? Um, so I think you still have to edit. Yeah. You still have to edit. But I think it's an easy way out. To do stuff. I mean, so people have used it for articles. Sometimes we even tell um, it to write about you and it comes up. There's oh, some boy. errors, but 
I think it's a good start. Yeah. It saves time. It's not scary. It is scary. Yeah. I mean, it is. The other day I was looking for a hotel in Barcelona. The next time I went into my Instagram, I'm just seeing Barcelona, Barcelona. I'm like thinking. This thing has yeah, it's scary got me covered. Because nothing is private. Well, I have a confession to make. I it was a Bible study thing. I was supposed to come up with a topic and I thought, Everybody's done this topic to death. How can I be original? And I thought, oh, chat GPT. It came up with the best, best Bible study. study. Oh, wow. I was so embarrassed. I wasn't sure whether... To use it or not. To use it or not. But it doesn't matter. It's, it's the, I asked it, a friend. It, it's, it's, said it's like Google. Gonna you're going to research yeah, anyway. You deliver. Yeah. The message you're sending out. Yeah. It's not where you got the message from. Yeah. Because, I mean... If I use Google to do my research, it's going to be the same exactly thing. The same. But then I did plea bargaining with God after that. <laughs> <laughs> but God, God help you. Uh, and he helped you, me you to too. Fight yes, to exactly. Yes. Okay. Are you watching anything on Netflix or DSTV? So there was a film that I watched. I, I watched over the weekend. Yes. The Happiest Girl Alive, I think. Okay. Or The Luckiest Girl Alive. What is it about? It's about a lady that. Um, she had a very good relationship, you know. Okay. Um, but she had been raped as a oh child. Oh, my goodness. Not as a child, in school. Gosh. But she was never, ever able to get over it. Until yeah. she was able to confront it and talk about it. Confront the person, the, the person, perpetrator. Yes. Okay. And she, she works in the media as Gosh. well. Gosh. So she was able to... Oh, it was a true it. story, wasn't it? I think so. She yeah, I think Times I read about it. Yes, it was a true story. story. And, I mean, it did affect her relationship, but she felt that she wouldn't be true to herself yeah. if she did not. Um, cause it's a bit heavy. It, yeah. I won't spoil the movie. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to. Do you know, I've reached a place, I only want happy stuff. I only well, want I like happy stuff. thriller, drama. Yeah. I got hooked on the Korean movies. Everybody's was, talking about this Korean. It was. What is it, it with this oh Korean thing? It is addictive. addictive. You're the third person oh, I've interviewed that said, go and watch it, this it Korean is, thing. It is addictive okay i'm not gonna start once you start you're I'm thinking at work <laughs> when yeah. am i gonna see the next episode i download everything on my ipad i'm watching it when i'm going on the road is it this is, on netflix it there's so many but the world of the married go and start with the world of the marriage. oh my goodness i'm scared to start the world of the marriage just watch the first yeah. episode first no that's the episode and okay now I'm and scared. And they're 45 minutes each. Can you imagine? So you put it on, you, you, you now have no life. You're going to binge watch. And, and the sad thing about it is you have to watch it. So you can't be doing other things because they have to translate. It's not in English. <laughs> so, you know, oh, oh, the world of the Okay. Mind. That's the second one I'm going to, I've got on my to-do list. And then what music are you listening to? I listen to christian music so what i've done on my spotify is you know downloaded all the nice christian music which i use when nathaniel bassi a bit of nathaniel okay. bassi you know that's always the easy one to that's how to i learned about, it's through the podcast i learned about nathaniel yeah. bassi he's never really heard of it he's before really inspirational yeah so yes you're very spiritual okay trying to this is where it gets interesting what's on your bucket list snoop dogg no, 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 Don't no, judge me. me. Don't <laughs> judge me. Don't judge me. I can't believe it. You are Snoop Dogg. I, I would I, never I, have put I you want together. To meet Snoop Dogg, and I want Snoop Dogg to come and perform what, for what, my what, birthday. What a pairing! I mean, I, I've heard of Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg, <laughs> but are you kidding me? This we got to put this on Twitter. Snoop, you got yeah, a fan. Snoop. Yep. Oh my yep, goodness. Yep, so, yep. what's your favorite Snoop Dogg song? Snoop Dogg. I die. I am dead. Okay, now so this is worth a joke in itself. No, it's, it, yeah, that's yeah. So I think it's not a joke really, but I can remember when um, I think we were fundraising for Wando and yeah. we we're going around all over Nigeria um, to you know to meet dignitaries, to meet governors. So I walked in. So we went to meet the Emir. And was that Sanusi at that time? Or? No, it wasn't. Or before it was him. Before him. And usually, you know, with this traveling around, I probably used to be the only, the comms person was the only girl. So we walked in to see the, to see the Emir. Um, everybody walked past. They were shaking him. And I just gave him my hand to shake him. And everybody just stood there. He couldn't shake me. 
I, I didn't put my hand down until somebody grabbed me. Oh, and no. Said, they don't, they don't shake hands. So I had to, like, Ooh. Why you just put my hand down and shut that Stylishly, as they say. Stylishly. Stylishly. And, um, never repeated that. So that was quite funny and embarrassing because all the guys were making fun of me after. <laughs> okay. So are you thinking I'm going to give you a pass for a joke? No, I'm not. I'm still waiting for that joke. <laughs> that is a joke. I know. That, that was amusing. That was amusing. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, okay, so who's your favorite comedian? Who's that guy? He's not my favorite comedian. But you like him. But I think he can be quite funny. The guy that was slapped by... Oh, uh, no. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. I do not like he Chris can be Rock. He annoying. Yeah. He can be a bit annoying, but some things, you know... He can be, yes, he can be funny. To, yes, I guess so. You don't have so. to think too hard to laugh. What people were saying recently is that he has a thing against black women. His jokes are always against black women. And really? he's, that's what they say. I don't know. I'm not judging. Um, and that he, his jokes are for a white audience and he's sort of like dissing the black community. Anyway, this is all Twitter. Don't quote me. <laughs> So he needs some reputation management. Management. Well. He should call on you. His messaging. On his messaging. Yes, he needs to modify his messaging. Yeah, I like Trevor Noah because I think he's a bit intelligent. His, okay, okay. His, his jokes. He's a shorter guy, right? He's a South African guy South, okay. who was on The Daily Show. Okay. I just, he makes you think. Oh, yeah, 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 that guy. Yeah, he makes you think. Oh, but sometimes, I, anyway, I think all... Um, all comedians, comedians yeah. Can be a bit they, sail, they sail a bit close to the wind. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope it wasn't been too painful. No, it wasn't. It was very conversational. Thank you. <laughs> now, what I wanted to ask you, um, if people want to get hold of you and they want to have a personal brand or their company needs some work. Sure. How do they do that? I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Tukumba as George Taylor. Tokumba George Taylor. Tokumba George Taylor. Yeah. I'm on Instagram. You can yeah. send me a private DM. Okay. Do you um, handle your... Yes, I do. Yourself? I okay. Do. Um, my, the name of the company is Hill and Norton Strategies. Yeah. Ted. We're on Sanusi Fafungwa. You can yeah. go to our website. And again, we have uh, an email for you to send information to the company. Okay. What's um, the email? Anything. The email, my email is long, but you can do info at, at strategies okay. dot com dot ng. Okay. And the information, I actually get access to that as well. So I'll be able to see the email. But LinkedIn is probably the, the easiest. The best, yes, um, yes. Because yes. you can, you know, send You need to brand on LinkedIn if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, you know. That's where people brand themselves. And that's where people look for people. Position yourself. Yeah, that's true. Position yourself. I know people who have been headhunted from LinkedIn. People are always headhunted from LinkedIn. LinkedIn. You know, people pick directors from LinkedIn. Gosh. You know. Okay. So, yeah. So LinkedIn is probably the easiest. It's the best place to. And, you know, and I do a lot of mentoring as well. For yes. People who, who are starting out. Um, so I have. And what about mentoring people's wives and <laughs> girlfriends who breached a position? Hmm. hmm. Again, you know, you had said before they need yeah. to know they need it. Yes. If they yeah. don't feel they need it. And you invade their space, yeah. Um, you know, it'll become a problem. But I think women should also be true to women. Yeah. If you see things that your friend, your colleagues, you don't feel it's quite right and they need help with, please speak up and let them know that's what friends are all about. You yeah. know, we need to be each other's keeper. Don't see somebody doing stuff and ignore it and laugh at them. I think you need to be truthful. Or maybe them. you're just being diplomatic and you don't want to talk. Then that person is not your friend. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Tox. You're such a star. I mean, you've opened my eyes. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to reevaluate my clothes, my, my, my personal branding, Man. all my shyness is gonna have to go somewhere else. You've made me want to raise my game. We all need to at some point in our lives. I don't know. I'm getting too old for that. Never too uh, old to I don't know. I don't know. I just want to crawl into some space and let all the stress go over my head. But you always do. There's always your space yeah. after that. When yeah. you go to your comfort, into your house, you can debrand. Yeah, that's true. Or when you're in the public with yeah. your target audience, put your best foot forward. Yeah. Okay. I'll remember that. Put your best foot forward. Thank you so much. I've had a brilliant time. Thank you and, so much. And uh, take care.